came in here today because it was sunny, but it's actually uh, quite chaotic because we have the Tour of Britain cycle race going on. Uh, if I turn around here, you'll see some of the support vehicles passing behind me here. Uh, the bikes have just gone past, but that's not why we're here. Uh, I'm here because Glasgow is one of seven cities in the UK to uh, have recently introduced 5G phone services. EE and Vodafone are both running 5G services now, and BT has said they're going to be doing theirs before the end of 2019. So it's an interesting test bed at the moment. So I wanted to come in and take some measurements just to see how bad things are. And uh, first of all, let me dispel some of the disinformation going on about 5G. Um, people are worried about the higher frequencies, the millimeter wave stuff. And the problem with the, the higher frequencies is that we will require many more transmitters to get the coverage, uh, which means there will be uh, transmitters on it for every other lamppost practically. Now, to the best of my knowledge, we're not doing that in Britain at the moment because they've decided that the uh, cost of replacing all the infrastructure is going to be too high. So at the moment, we're just sticking to the, the expanded lower frequencies. Uh, typically, 3G, 4G services occupy about the 3 gigahertz band and the, uh, the newer lower frequencies extend as far as 6 gigahertz. So as far as I'm aware, that's the bands that we're using. So we're really only talking about uh, 4.5G, if you like, uh, not the full um, higher frequencies, which will extend up to at least 100 gigahertz. Uh, so at the moment, uh, it's still basically just the same as uh, 4G. But it's the, the power hurdle levels that we're interested in. So how uh, strong is the power density of these fields? And that's what I'm here to measure. Now behind me on the, uh, whatever for the people make Glasgow building, you can see a phone mass. And uh, if you look down the side of that, you can see another two phone masts as well. And that's the only two transmitters I can actually see here at the moment. Uh, there may be some more concealed, most likely in the roof of the city chambers, which is up there. Uh, but these are all what you call macro cells. I've seen very little evidence of the, uh, the, the small cell stuff that will be necessary for the higher frequencies of 5G. Anyway, let's get the acoustometer out and we'll take some readings. Now, just to explain the, the instrument here, um, this measures the average and the peak levels. And the scale on the right is the uh, average. The scale on the left is the peak. Very often the, uh, the peaks can be about 100 times higher than the average levels. And of course the average levels are what they base the, uh, the safe, safety levels on. The two lines I've put on the acoustometer here uh, represent the reports of the Bioinitiative uh, Group and also the Salzburg Convention. And the bottom line is what they, uh, they recommend for um, outdoor levels. That's what they, they should be. And phones will work much uh, lower than this. The upper line is the recommended maximum outdoor level. Um, however, the, the World Health Organization and the um, ICNIRP uh, both have levels that are much higher than that, much higher than the scale represents, in fact, um, which are based on very old uh, reports from 1998 or so. So they're well out of date by today's uh, technology standards. And the readings here, we've got a peak of 4.27 volts per meter, which is into the red on the uh, peak scale here. And uh, the average is coming out about 750, 770. So yes, yeah, so we're pretty close to the, the maximum recommended level here. And these levels are for continuous exposure. Um, you, you can, it's acceptable to have uh, short-term uh, peak exposures that are higher than this. However, this does seem to be at or above that level most of the time. So this is the levels outside the city chambers in George Square. Uh, let's move on and see how we are elsewhere. So here we are in uh, Queen Street, just opposite Royal Exchange Square. You can see the uh, Duke of Wellington statue behind me with his uh, trademark traffic cone head. And I uh, see the horse is wearing one today as well. Um, now I can't see any obvious transmitters here, but it's very likely there are some in the uh, tower of the Museum of Modern Art there. So I um, also just wanted to say before we take any more readings, um, I'm not an advocate for 5G, uh, quite the reverse in fact. However, I do advocate for accurate information uh, because there's such a lot of disinformation being put around about 5G. Uh, that's why I really wanted to make this video, just to give you some uh, accurate readings. I'm not a professional expert in the field by any standards, but I do do a lot of reading and research on what's going on, try to keep up to date. So I hope you find this information useful. Anyway, let's see what the acoustometer has to say about uh, this area.
so I hope you can see that reading there. We're reading about uh, 2.4849 on the peak readings here, and it was up to about 5600 on the uh, the average reading. So you can see on the left here it is well into the red scale. This is not a healthy level of radiation that you would want, uh, certainly in your home, you wouldn't want this. Um, just a reminder, the bottom line here is the recommended outdoor level. Uh, that's, that's an ideal level, and the top line is the recommended maximum outdoor level by the uh, Bioinitiative report. So again, you can see we're still very close to that, if not above it. And you can probably hear the acoustometer here, but I'm going to get a bit closer. So this should be picking up all the frequencies that are currently in use. Uh, the acoustometer is, uh, has a range from, as you can see, 200 MHz up to 8 GHz. And uh, currently, to the best of my knowledge, we're only uh, extending up to 6 GHz. I've seen there are higher bands available, but uh, in the UK, uh, the main companies have said that they won't be going above 24 GHz at the moment. Uh, I know in North America and Can uh, Canada and America, they are uh, uh, already implementing um, bands up to 100 gigahertz and uh, they're the ones that are of concern because to get those millimeter waves as they're called you need to be having transmitters at every other lamppost so your exposure level is going to be correspondingly higher so here we are on the Canyon Street um, class is made shopping streets and the levels are still about the same still a bit higher than I would like for uh, any long-term exposure though. Now, I had thought there might be a transmitter inside this police box. Uh, which normally serves coffee, so there may well be. Um, I'm not seeing any difference next to this lamppost and looking down the street, so I'm not convinced that there are transmitters in the lamppost, as some people would have you believe. Now, here's one of the trees in McKenna Street, and I have heard somebody say that these are Wi-Fi transmitters, uh, or 5G transmitters. It's not actually the case though, this is simply a junction box with a switch mode transformer um, which powers the fader lights around the trees. So nothing sinister about these at all. Now here we do actually have a couple of small cells. Um, let me zoom in here. You see the little light box on top of the pole there? This is one of the police webcams. Uh, and that white box is a small cell transmitter. Uh, right to the right here as well, and we have this old um, toilet block, and up in the end of it here you can see another small cell transmitter. Um, but let's look at the levels. Slightly higher because I'm close to the transmitter, we're up 3.25 on the peak there. So uh, slightly higher than you would expect compared with the, the rest of the average. However, these of course will just be um, probably a closed circuit in effect, S small cell just transmitting back to the office, so it's not like um, public uh, 5G or anything like that. But just gives you an idea, these are the sort of things you want to be looking for. Okay, St George's Tron Parish Church in Nelson Mandela Place. Now, if there's anywhere there's going to be some transmitters, it's going to be in that tower up there. A lot of churches these days are uh, renting space in the towers for uh, phone transmitting ma transmission masks. No obvious sign though of anything around here. And the readings again... quite the same. You know, we're still into the red on the peak here. Uh, but the average one is uh, still in the green, so... Top end of Piano Street, just outside the concert hall. Uh, at a peak here of 3.89, it's more averaging around about the one volt per meter mark. Now I stopped here at this BT uh, advertising holding here because it says um, it has ultra fast Wi Fi, open your device to connect. However, looking at the acoustic meter, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think this is Wi-Fi, this is uh, possibly 5G this is putting out, 5.94 on the peak there. Okay, so we were in second hall street here and I've stopped outside this gap site where there was a fire last year. Um, this is a BT building at the back there, so you can see there's quite a lot of transmitters on the top. These are Mac 
to see our transmitters. And if we get our readings here again. And if we can adjust that, so it's all about the same. So there's something here that's putting out a lot, and I'm wondering if this is another of these in link BT towers with super fast Wi Fi. Well, again, it doesn't sound like it. Just that I give you a shot of the recently reopened uh, Willow Tunes. Travel Jenny McIntosh, the title of piece of architecture. And let's play one of these uh, BT in link things again. Again, you can see the levels here are not massively high. So here we are again, that's about 2.2 or something like that. Now I should emphasize that I'm filming this on my phone, which is in flight mode at the moment, so it's not coming from that. I've just stopped here beside Kokadden subway station uh, to look at this building across the road with the tower. If you look closely at the tower, you can see these macrocell transmitters on the outside. It's two on each face, so that's eight transmitters up there. We've even painted them brown so that you don't notice them too much. So what sort of levels are we looking at? Well, it's uh, about the same actually, still hovering around the bio-initiative recommended maximum, slightly more than that. But, uh, but even at this distance you would expect that to be um, considerably higher. So I guess it's, you know, I'm not saying it's great, but it's uh, certainly not as bad as I thought it was going to be in this part of town. So, in conclusion then, um, I would say that the levels of um, 4G and 5G in general are not as bad as I honestly thought they were going to be in the town. Um, it's still quite high in open spaces, so not a level I would be comfortable with spending a lot of time in, and certainly not a level that you want to have in your home. So, um, as I said, the phone companies are mainly going to be using enhanced 4G at the moment, so you can think of it as 4.5G if you like. And these are still sticking to the frequencies below uh, 6 gigahertz. Although in North America, uh, they will certainly uh, be using frequencies up to 100 gigahertz. And I know in some places they are installing a lot of the small cell transmitters on uh, every other utility pole to give the blanket coverage required for these higher frequencies. Um, as you know, they do not travel as far and they're easily blocked by buildings, people and trees even. So uh, we need to be careful, we need to resist the rollout of this sort of stuff in your neighbourhood. Um, in Britain certainly it's likely they'll only be using these higher 5G frequencies to get the extra bandwidth in areas where there are a lot of people who want simultaneous connections, like uh, sporting stadiums, you know, ma major public events like that, uh, you're likely to get um, the higher frequencies uh, used. Um, but however, in general, for most public areas, it's just this enhanced 4G. Now, something else you have to resist is that the um, 5G companies will be trying to push 5G routers in the home for your home Wi-Fi and internet connections. Uh, this, of course, gives them the advantage that they can then make part of that uh, spectrum available for public use. Um, I know certainly some companies do this already with their Wi-Fi. Uh, they make part of it available to create their public Wi-Fi networks. So with a 5G router, they can do the same. So um, any, you know, it would help to enhance their, their public Wi-Fi networks. So resist that. Uh, refuse to have a 5G router. Go for fibre. Uh, fibre is definitely the way forward. And they certainly need fibre optic connections to provide many of these 5G services. So why not just put the fibre into the home? You know, that's certainly what we should all be going for. It's a more secure connection. Uh, it's as fast, uh, if not faster, than the, the current 5G proposals. And it's much safer to use. So the ideal situation would be you have fibre in your home. Uh, you do not have your Wi-Fi switched on. You have everything connected with Ethernet. And it's easy enough to do that these days. Even your phone and your iPad can be connected with Ethernet cables. Um, if you can't do this, if you don't want to run Ethernet through the house, you can use power line adapters, which sends the internet through your mains wiring. And again, you do not need the Wi-Fi switched on for this. Um, and if you can't do any of that, at least switch your Wi-Fi off at night. And you sleep a lot better with your Wi-Fi switched off. Uh, so that's my conclusions on the uh, 5G situation in Glasgow at the moment. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.